Ollie, Krangbin have become a very, very popular, almost trendy band over the past maybe year or so, maybe a bit longer than that. Yeah. And at first glance, it may seem a bit shocking that, as you as you've said before, this is an instrumental band. It's inspired by all these all these different genres. They declare, declare themselves as world music, and yet they've got hundreds of millions of streams on Spotify. They're pretty high up major festival bills these days, and they've got fans all the way from Jay Z, as you say, to the other side, which is kind of like middle class mums that seem to love them as well. Um, and I I think their rise is it's not just like a fluke. Um, you know, since their inclusion on Bonobo's Late Night Tales mix. Um, their whole career seems to have been shaped by appearing on various playlists um, and these playlists are usually devoted to the act of, of chilling or being chill or purveying chillness and it's come to a point where they are like really streaming service darlings and in my opinion the popularity of their music is absolutely tied to its classification as being chill and all the playlists dedicated to music like that so if you don't know what I mean here are some examples so Spotify actually currently classifies chill as its own genre, and, and, they see, <laughs> right. and they seem intent on basically shaping everyone's musical experience towards towards being chilled. So yeah, here are some of their playlists you can find on Spotify which have the word chill in, and this might kind of come, these might come up on your homepage. Um, so chill hits, chill vibes, chilled eighties, chilled tracks, chilling on a dirt road, <laughs> evening chill, chill as folk, acoustic chill, indie chill out, chill singer songwriter, licensed to chill, Indian chill, chill covers, lazy chill afternoon, sunset chill, Montreal chill chill instrumental beat pop chill out <laughs> chilled Ibiza it gets even worse here Ollie. chilled jazz chilled classical and finally the worst of the lot deep house chill <laughs> so like the problem with this outside of obviously just the horrendous playlist the, the, ba- the best one is chilling on a dirt road no chilling doubt. on a dirt road yeah that probably is actually the best you're right um, Indian chill I like as well or license to chill um <laughs> So yeah, the problem, obviously, they, they sound ridiculous and like chilling on a dirt road, I, I can't believe that exists. But the problem beyond that is that it reconfigures, reconfigures sorry, music and, and Krung Min's music as well within that as something passive, right? It's only there to facilitate the particular mood of being chilled. Or even worse, sometimes it facilitates, you know, productivity. So it's the idea that this is chilled music. This is great chilled music to work to or to study to or to have on in the background. And it, you know, it's not something that rewards active participation or active listening. It just promotes this homogenous sound with no experimentation, where you can just kind of have it on in the background. And it's not just the playlist, because the way Krung Bin have been covered in the press, often you know, it always describes them in these terms too. I'll read you a quote, I'll, and I'd like to hear what you think about it. So, this is a quote from I think uh, maybe a New York Times profile. Can't remember exactly, but here we go. Their music feels like sun on your skin, skin, crisp air first thing in the morning. The realization that you never actually look at the sky during the morning commute. It's a band which provides a soundtrack for the micro pleasures of the everyday, while hinting at the possibility of a world of new experiences. So they seem to be saying that this is music for everyday moments of your life. Like it's just background music. It's the equivalent of you know adjusting the temperature on on your on your air conditioning or something like that. Mm. What does that quote make you think of? Um, I definitely have a problem with the idea of it being described as chill or being in any of those playlists that you've listed. I mean, the, I think the thing is, just because just because music and their music specifically has space in it doesn't mean that it's necessarily half finished or chill, like, especially on the kind of uh, like lo-fi chill house playlist that you sometimes see people listening to. <laughs> a lot of that stuff, you kind of like, is this like half done? Like, well, what's going on? And I don't think Krung Bin fit into that category, to be fair. So yeah, I, th- I find it kind of strange that they've been described as, I mean, in all those words that you just used. Yeah, I mean, your point just then about it being half finished, it's weird because the, the genre and the music industry, industry seems to be fetishizing stuff that's half done. Like the idea of something being produced to a, it, some things can be produced to a fault now. Like they have to be underdone to like give forth this uh, this attitude of, of chillness. And it's definitely not just Krung Bin or Spotify. I'm sure everyone's familiar with like the chill hot playlists on YouTube, the the chill beats to study and work to, which has become a bit of a meme. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, as you mentioned, Lo-Fi House as well. <sighs> so you don't think, gonna, you don't I think mean, Krung Bin I, deserves I just to be ripped in? Yeah, I mean, I I I don't think so, but I I quite like their music. I. I have a larger problem with the idea of listening to music while you're working as well. Because I mean, at least for me, I can't listen to music that I like and work at the same time because I get distracted. Now and again, 
I might be able to put on a really intense techno mix to work to because it'll just put me in a proper intense frame of mind. But then as soon as a song comes on that I more than like a little bit, it'll just completely distract me again. So the idea that you're just um, describing all this music like Krang Bin that has complexity, that has depth, that has space in it as just something to listen to while you're doing something else. I don't know, I, f I find that a bit disrespectful, to be honest. I'd, I'd be I'd be pissed if I was in the band and I heard it described like that, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, me too. And I don't think it's just disrespectful to the band. I think it's like indicative of quite, of, I, mean, I don't want to go too big a picture here, but the fact that music, which is a, obviously an art form, something creative and supposed to be an outlet of, you know, catharsis or whatever, is being treated as something that should fuel productivity as if like, all right, we're not working hard enough. Like I'm not being as efficient as I could be. Let me whack out on, on chilled beats to, to work to and it will make my productivity more. It's like, so music now exists to, to like make us a more efficient, capitalist society it's just it's a really i think it's a really fucking insidious um way of looking at things to be honest i mean have you if, if krungbin don't deserve this label are there some bands that do deserve this label at all or um i mean i think one problem is maybe when you're a band that relies on a, a kind of vibe that's not maybe not a great word <laughs> vibe when you music. kind of rehashing the same kind of tunes that's when it can be slightly problematic like jungle would be a pretty decent example mm. of that. They, I thought, I quite like their first album, but the second album sounds incredibly similar. I think there are examples of bands that have a type of sound, but then can then experiment from album to album. I think Massive Attack would be a really good example of that. Yeah, definitely. When you, when you listen to each of their albums, you can kind of tell it's them, but I definitely don't think you could level the accusation that they've basically made the same album five or six times. So you can you can be in a box, and there's no problem with being in that box. Spear has kind of spoken about this himself that you know pointless experimentation is stupid, mm. but you can experiment within your own sound. And unfortunately, I just don't think Mordecai does that enough. Yeah, I I think that you've like put it so well that it's almost like a grand conclusion. Experimentation is valuable but you have to be able to do it well. And Mordecai doesn't do that, but it also doesn't mean that they should be condemned to be playlist music or background music or music for streaming and music for chilling on a dirt, dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that fair to say? I think that's fair to say. All right. Uh,